Good morning, everyone, and very happy Republic Day. Uh, Ms. Jindal has spoken so beautifully. I moved to tears, my sari's favorite tears. So, <laughs> I apologize if I sound a little. So, uh, I am Sana's mother, and as all parents, we are so proud of our children. And uh, when I was asked to speak, I wanted to, I went back through the entire 14 year journey. When we moved to Gurdam in 2009, I missed DPF a day. 18th August was the last day. I came here on 19th. I was told from the outside that you can't go in. The form was over. I waited a whole year because I knew I wanted my kids to go here. I met Aditi Vishra man the next year. My son was already in Scottish Heights. And uh, man said, you are in a very good school. I said, man, I waited one year. I know what I want. I want my children to be here. So she said, we don't have a swimming pool. I said, ma'am, my building has a swimming pool. <laughs> so, I mean, no offense to anybody else who wants to send their children to anywhere, whichever school. School is something of very personal choice. I spent 30 years of my life studying. 14 years in school and 16 years after school. For me, academics was very, very important. And when I moved to Gurgaon, I met all the children. And I'm sorry to say, but your children are the ambassadors of your school. Three children in my building who would not reply to a good morning were from one school. And I swore that I won't, I mean, it's one of the leading schools of Gurgaon, where all the children come in their BMWs and Mercedes. But if they don't have the discipline to even reply back to a good morning, then that's not the kind of child I wanted to raise. And I was very clear about that. So DPS doesn't have a swimming pool, it doesn't have golf course, it doesn't have horse riding, but what it has is a brick and mortar. It has a school that gives value. It makes you the kind of people that this country needs. You know, not only good leaders, good human beings. It's very, very important. For me it was important and I'm sure all the parents here chose DPS for whatever their particular reasons. And since I was very active in the IMA, a lot of doctors used to come and ask me, why did you choose DPS? So I was very clear why I chose. And I'm just going to share three or four things. One was when my uh, son was in pre-nursery and uh, I, he, after the first few days of excitement, he, got, he was crying every day. He didn't want to go to school. So one day I told him, let's go. I promise I'll bring you back. But I want to go, let's meet the teacher. So he was in pre-nursery. I took him to the, pre the infant wing. I met the teacher. And he said, he can I? That's what he told me. I was taking him out of the school. The, head, the headmistress of the infant wing was there and she said, ma'am, why are you taking him? I said, ma'am, I promise that today I'll bring him back and tomorrow onwards he will come without crying. She said, if you promise, you have to do it. I was so touched because I thought they wouldn't let me take him back. But that, from that day, that boy had so much confidence that when his mother has promised, she will deliver, she will not cheat him. The school will not cheat him and that's why he learned trust. And that's a very important thing. If a child is not able to trust the school, his teachers and his parents, they will never be able to trust anybody. So that's a very, very, very important point. The second thing, a school is not just brick and mortar. This lady who's sitting in front of us for 14 years with an Aditi Mishra man. I have no qualms in saying she's one of the few people I deeply admire. I used to be in love with my principal and the next person I found I could look up to is this. Wonderful human being. My daughter went from two feet to almost six feet. And man is just the same. Her energy is the same. Uh, she scolds parents nicely. It's in this auditorium. After every function, she sends the children away and then she threatens the parents. <laughs> she tells them about social media. I am so grateful to you, ma'am. Because of you, I did not give my children mobile phones till the age of 12. Uh, we, my husband and I we did not give my children tablets. We saved them from spectacles. These are big things. And these days I see other children, parents, you won't believe I am a patient, I am a doctor. I had a parent of a fourth standard child saying my child is addicted to the phone. I said, who gave it to him? No child has a right to a phone, either their parents or their own. And forget social media, the phone itself is such a nuisance. The eyeball shape changes by about one, one and a half millimeter. You get a spectacle of four to five. So please don't be afraid of being strict. I learned this from her. She used to tell parents, have every, at least one meal with your children. And I heard from Sana that in our building, less than 10 kids had 
have dinner with their parents. How unfortunate is that? They have food alone in front of their TV. Where will you buy buying with your kids? The children are now 18, 17, 18, they'll be off to school, they'll be gone forever. The time you have with them is finite. The day my child was born, I knew I had her for 17 years. One year is a bonus. And everything beyond this will be waiting for holidays, waiting for them to come back. So parents, give whatever you can is during this time and not later. The teachers, I want to add a note, ma'am. I don't know what quality you find in your teachers, but from the last 14 years, I've not found a single teacher who was negative, who was mean, who was evil. I don't know what amazing quality. All the teachers have been so amazing energy. Every class teacher. It is, even when they scold, it's out of love. It is such a beautiful feeling to entrust my child every year. When the teacher used to reach out with a message and saying, I'm your class teacher, I used to say, I trust you with sun hour, with Anish, and I, I look forward to the year. And at the end of every year, whether I've not met them even twice in the PTI, but throughout the year, I acknowledge their messages and I tell them thank you. Once, I got a note only once in 14 years, your child is wearing the young, wrong uniform. I did not give an excuse. I said, ma'am, I will ensure it doesn't happen. It gives that much respect. These teachers are so amazing. They are the ones who are nurturing your children. And I'm so grateful to each and every child, uh, teacher who's looked after my children. I'm so grateful. The last thing I want to say is to the children. Your life is just starting. Some of you will go to engineering college, some will go to medicine, some will do law, some will do interior designing. Some of you will become mothers and homemakers. Just be the best you can. Don't be afraid to try because you will fail only if you haven't tried. You may not, today, you know you aspire to be in AIMS or in JE or your IIT or whatever. If you succeed, awesome. If you don't, wherever you go, do the best you can. You guys have the next your whole life ahead of you. It's the most exciting time. I wish I was young again, but I would have gone through life as it is, you know. It is such a beautiful time. Be kind. Most of all to yourselves. And especially to the girls, I just want to tell you, don't sacrifice. Don't tell, don't let people tell you to adjust. If marriages have to work, both people have to do it. It is not the woman's job. Don't put your child, your spouse, your parents before your happiness. This is something I wish some, my parents had told me. Nobody did. I'm telling you now because I'm 40 plus. And I feel this is something that, especially the girls, because in India, Boys are automatically given the right to choose, but girls are not. Keep your traditions in your mind, but remember that you only have one life. Lean it to the fullest, so that when you are 80, you don't have a regret and say, Yaar, mujhe karna tha, mummy ne karne nahi diya. Jiyo, khul ke jiyo. Enjoy your life. And you know what? I was right, and I chose GPS. Thank you, sir.